Hey everybody, this must be the absolute fastest draft ever. Uh, again, we had like a 20 minute round uh, and everybody was ready to go again. This draft is going to be done in like an hour. Uh, so I won the die roll. Uh, of course I want to play first. Uh, let's just get the chat uh, changed back to who we're actually playing. There we go. So let's see, down here we have uh, a turn 2 Torch Fiend and then a turn 7 Resolute <laughs> Archangel. Uh, we do have all three of our colors though. Um, frankly, I kind of want to start a game with seven or seven cards, um, so I think I might keep this. Uh, again, a risky keep, but uh, we all know my confidence in this deck is not great. So let's keep our si our, uh, our seven here, not go to six. We're going to lead with this Lonely Mountain and pass the turn. So t turn two, we're going to get a Torch Fiend out. Uh, and then hopefully we pull some gas, and we don't. We pull a land. Well, we're getting ever closer to that Resolute Archangel, so that's a, a plus, I suppose. So he's blue. What could he be pairing blue with? Blue-red. Perhaps he's the blue-red artifact deck? Down goes the Welkin turn that I passed up. Pick one, pack one. Uh, I pull yet another planes. Uh, so let's make this a bit of a race for the time being. I'll bash in for two, pass the turn. He will bash in for two and hopefully pass the turn. Uh, but I have a feeling he is going to instead be a jerk and play something. In comes the Welkin turn. I take two, 18 all. He plays a land, and he plays a Goblin Rough Rider, a 3-2. So he's being pretty aggressive as well. We've got a Frenzied go Goblin. Um, so I think I'm just going to bash in with the Torch Fiend here. See if he wants to trade. I don't think he does. Didn't think so. So we've got a Frenzied Goblin we can play for one, and then we can use it to convoke uh, the crowd's favor to actually kill that Goblin Rough Rider, which would be pretty nice. Trading a, uh, a one drop for a three drop. It's a two for one, but when you're trading a one drop for a three drop, a two for one's not terrible. Oh, he is going to get to draw a card, however, off military intelligence. So he's definitely a bit of a uh, an aggressive deck here. Luckily, I can kill this Goblin Rough Rider, uh, so maybe I can turn off his military intelligence for a turn at least. So we are going to block his Goblin with my Goblin. And then we're going to give my Goblin plus one, plus O, oh, and first strike. And he's got something. Turn to Frog. Or Negate, possibly. Or Heat Ray. Heat Ray does it. So uh, we two for two'd. Or, or no, actually. Uh, I two for one, but the one was a Heat Ray and not the creature. So I take two, I go to 16. Um, and we draw yet another planes. Uh, so we have drawn a Frenzied Goblin. That's all we've drawn in this game. Um, I guess I might hold him back. He is the beatdown. I am not the beatdown here. Uh, so I hold back that Torch Fiend, and I can block that Goblin Rough Rider. He's going to get to draw another card off Military Intelligence, which, you know, I, I prefer that he stop that at some point. Uh, but this does take us one turn closer to Resolute Archangel. So I block Goblin Rough Rider. Uh, unless he has a trick, uh, they trade. Otherwise, I go to 11. Let's block. See if he has anything. He doesn't, so they do trade. But he did get that card draw. We are getting ever closer to our angel, however. Three, four, five, six, seven. We have the lands in hand and on the battlefield, so that's a plus. He plays Altac Bloodseeker. Whenever a creature dies, whenever one of my creatures dies, it gets plus two, plus oh, and first strike until end of turn. It's less than ideal. Uh, that's also less than ideal, getting a, uh, a wall of fire, two red when we only have one mountain. So I'm going to have to pass the turn here. One land short of that archangel. He's going to get in for five, 
taking me to nine. Luckily, the Archangel does reset my life total. Um, so that is a little bit of a plus. Top decking Kona Flame would be pretty nice here. I could uh, destroy all of his creatures, uh, let him have absolutely no board left. Uh, of course, he does have a pretty full hand with that military intelligence. And he drops a Glacial Crasher. So it's a 5-5 five five with Trample. Uh, and he has Mountains, so he can attack with it. I top deck a Curd Chieftain, which would be a 4-4. Four four. Could block the Bloodseeker. And he'd come in for... 7, taking me to 3, and then the following turn I could Archangel back up to 20. He has 3 cards. He could have Appeal from Reality uh, or anything, basically, that would bounce my Curd Chieftain. Um, even that would only give him 9 if it was Peel, because he would have to bounce one of his own creatures. Uh, if it was into the void, uh, he would just win. He has three cards in hand. And he will get to draw the card for military intelligence before uh, blockers are declared. So he has a chance to even draw into something. So... I think the statistical play, the, the slightly better odds is playing the Archangel and going back to 20. And it will also be quite a good blocker against everything except for that Glacial Crasher. So I think we'll do that. We'll play the Resolute Archangel. He's probably going to rummage as well. Yeah. So he's going to rummage and get even uh, another chance at hitting... One of those cards that I mentioned, if he has them, he may not, and we may uh, have run into a bit of luck, but who knows. So I pass the turn, and I have a blocker. Um, I suppose I would probably block the Bloodseeker, because it cannot uh, get any bigger without this Archangel dying. And if the Archangel dies, it's going to die anyways. So he swings in for two. Um... The Bloodseeker is more important, I think, than the Welkin turn. So I will block the Bloodseeker. Uh, he doesn't have a trick, so it just dies. He may very well have a Lightning Strike or something, however, and just finish off the Archangel. Uh, nope, just another Welkin turn. So he's got one heck of an aggressive deck here. Uh, Scrapyard Mongrel as well. This is definitely one of the more aggressive uh, uh, red-blue decks that I've seen. Uh, Devouring Light. That's a nice pickup. We can get rid of that Glacial Crasher. Uh, so if I play the Curd Chieftain, uh, red, green, white, white, I would have enough without the Archangel to do Devouring Light. So I could swing in for four, taking him to 12. He would swing in probably with an awful lot of people. And I would get rid of that. And he would come in for a minimum of four. Uh, I, I certainly would like him to bounce my Resolute Archangel right about now, actually. Um, but I think I'm going to have to play it safe. As I said, I am not the beat down here. Uh, so I will just play the Curd Chieftain and pass, uh, keeping the Resolute Archangel back to block uh, the Welkin turns, the Scrapyard Mongrels, something. So Kurt Jafton's ability is uh, four and a green, and target creature gets plus two, plus two, and trample. That's not bad. Four and a green. It's kind of pricey, but it's not terrible. So he's down to three cards. He'll be up to four when he attacks this turn. Luckily this turn, I should be able to clear him out a little bit. The Devouring Light against the Glacial Crasher. Uh, what the heck is this? Ooh, Capture Kite Fins. He's going to tap down the Archangel, I imagine. So his Flyers are going to come in with Impunity. The Mongrel I can still get rid of with the Curd Chieftain. 
and I'm going to Devouring Light the Glacial Crasher. Oh, he pulls the Scrapyard Mongrel back. Hopefully that means that he does in fact have not very much uh, in the way of bounce or removal. So I'm going to Devouring Light that Glacial Crasher. I'll take four and I'll go to nine. Unfortunately, any creatures he has are still going to keep tapping down my Archangel as long as that Kite Fins is out. Military Intelligence in the right deck is a fantastic card. Uh, finally, I get a second Mountain. Um, so arguably, if he's going to tap down my Kite Fins, I could attack in. Or if he's going to tap down my Archangel with the Kite Fins, I could attack in uh, just to get my Archangel doing something. Um, but then he would snap back for three, four, five, six, seven, taking me to two. Um, so yeah, I think I just have to uh, be careful here. So I can go Wall of Fire. Uh, okay, he's just rummaging. <laughs> uh, heart skipped a beat there. Um, so I have enough mana back as well to activate Curd Chieftain. So I can make uh, another creature, right? No, target creature, so he can target himself as well. Uh, so I can give something plus two plus two and trample. Uh, which will let me block stuff, but he must have a creature here, which is going to tap down my Archangel. Yeah, down comes a Thundering Giant. So that's going to be coming in as well. So three, four, five, six, seven is going to come in the air. He may or may not attack with the Thundering Giant and the Mongrel. If he does, I can just bounce the Wall of Fire against the Mongrel and nothing would happen. Uh, oh, he's going to Inferno Fist. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's lethal. Nothing I can do about that. I have no cards. So that is game for sure. Yeah, just more lands. So that's a pretty solid deck he has. That's a great blue-red aggro deck. That is exactly the deck you want to see uh, military intelligence in. Um, Welkin turns are just great to have. Uh, my Cone of Flame would have been a fantastic card in that game. Lots of one uh, toughness, lots of two toughness. Actually, no, there wasn't much two toughness, but lots of one toughnesses uh, as well as three toughness. Um, hopefully I see that Cone of Flames this game. Clear path, he does not have any walls that I saw, and I highly doubt he would have any walls. Um, I was playing a bit of a more controlling deck, Tyrant's Machine. There's an argument for it, um, but I still think I'd prefer to keep in. Um, well, actually, no, you know what? I am going to put in Tyrant's Machine over the Hot Soup. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be the beatdown in this matchup, so Hot Soup is just a completely dead card. Um, Tireless Missionaries is a, an arguable choice. That three life is relatively meaningless, but who knows what could come of it. Um, but I don't think I want another five drop, uh, and I don't think I would trade any of these five drops for it. So we'll submit the deck as is. Um, confidence is low, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I will play first. I will not keep a no land hand. I will not keep a one land bunch of large creature hands. I will have to keep this hand. Uh, and this hand actually isn't terrible. Um, the old uh, uh, motto, if he stumbles, I'm doing well. Uh, so turn one, Frenzied Goblin. Turn two, if I draw a land, border mar Borderland Marauder. Otherwise, just an Evolving Wilds. Uh, we don't draw a land, so I'll get in for one here. I will not pay a red. I mean, I could. I'm not going to do anything else with it, uh, uh, that mountain, but I won't. So, pass the turn. Down comes a Bronze Sable. All right, that's a blocker and a, a pretty good attacker. And it turns on his Mongrel. Uh, we're gonna grab a Plains 
And then we are going to... Um, I don't really want to even try to race him here. I will just keep the Frenzied Goblin back. Uh, and I think I'll pull out... I could pull out the Denizen and the Cathar. Or I could pull out the Marauder. These give me more chump blockers, and I know he has a lot of uh, X ones. And I don't think I'm going to be really getting too aggressive with my Borderland Marauder. So I think I will just bring out these one drops. Uh, it's not a great plan, <laughs> but it's it's the plan we have. And pass the turn. So down comes his Goblin Rough Rider again. Uh, if he attacks in with that Bronze Sable, I'm more than happy to trade it. And he does not. Didn't think so. So I pull a Mountain. Uh, I will drop a Borderland Marauder. And I'll say go. Or I could attack in with my Foundry Street Denizen. He has a 2-1 at the moment. He would trade with those guys. Uh, or he would do not much of anything. No, I think I'll just pass the turn. Um, I'll just try to build a wall and keep him stumbling. This would be a great place for him to hit military intelligence. No, nope. Welkin turn. So Welkin turn's going to start coming in the air. Uh, Welkin turn does not care about what's sitting on the ground here. Here's that tyrant's machine I sideboarded in. Um, I guess we'll play it. I don't see myself activating it anytime soon. And I assume he's just going to continue playing more and more creatures. So down comes a Thunderfish Giant. Or a Thundering Giant, not a Thunderfish Giant. So, I could triple block and kill the giant, or I can just take six. I think I'll just take six. And we'll get our turn. We hit a land, so I can start activating Tyrant's Machine, and I think that's about all I'm going to be able to do. Uh, so I'll pass the turn, and at the begin combat step, I will tap down his giant. He'll still get in for two. And he's going to play uh, Capture Kite Fins. So he's going to tap down something. And then he's going to start getting in the air for five a turn. Uh, yeah, I pretty desperately need to hit uh, Cone of Flames and a land. Uh, otherwise, I'm just in trouble. Well, I'm not in trouble, I just lose. <laughs> So we tap down his Thundering Giant. He's going to come in with the Welkin turn at least. Um, next turn, hitting a Devouring Light would be nice. So he's going to come in with the Welkin turn and the Goblin Rough Rider. Um, I would go to 9. I think I'm okay to double block here. Uh, he only has a blue creature and a colorless creature up, so he's not going to be convoking. So I will double block and kill the Rough Rider. And then take two off the Welkin turn. He is down to two cards. Uh, he's not doing uh, terribly well in the card draw department without military intelligence being up. So I do get another land. So Sanctified Charge is online. But Sanctified Charge would only kill the Thundering Giant, because he's going to attack in the air for five. And I doubt he would attack with the Bronze Sable. He's got a creature out, so my Marauder presumably is going to get tapped down. So I guess I'll just tap down the Thundering Giant again. could have traded, or not traded, I could have killed the Thundering Giant with the uh, Selfless Cathar. 
um, but I don't know if that would have been terribly useful. I think we're dead either way. Um, our deck just cannot handle flyers if we don't get out our own uh, uh, high-end angels pretty quick. So I can play a land here and pass the turn, and that's about it. So he's going to play probably a creature, which is going to tap down... Yeah, it's Scrapyard Mongrel, which is going to tap down Borderland Marauder. He's going to swing in for 5 in the air, 5 on the ground trample if I don't tap it, 4 on the ground that I can chump block, <laughs> an Alterac Bloodseeker. Yeah, he just wins here because he can tap down everything. So that was an absolutely terrible game. Um, we just had no chance there. So yeah, that was the draft. Uh, quickest draft I've ever played in my life. Uh, I'm pretty sure all three matches took no more than an hour uh, with absolutely no wait in between them. Um, <laughs> I would like to see that happen a bit more often, uh, but I'd like to see that happen with me winning. So that was Spiky Saturday. Unfortunately, we went one and two yet again. Uh, hopefully, I actually get a decent draft going one of these days. Um, M15 probably isn't my favorite draft format. I did really like Theros. Um, I really liked M14, actually, um, but hopefully I can get something going with M15. I'm probably going to take a look at uh, the throwback drafts that are happening next week and the week after. Um, Tempest Block, which is a block that I actually played uh, as a kid in middle school way back when. Uh, must be maybe 13, 14, 15 years ago. Uh, I'll probably try a draft of that. I have no real idea how to draft it at all. Um, but I will give it a go. And then the week after that is going to be an Innistrad draft. And Innistrad is the draft format that I started with when I got back into Magic a few years ago. Uh, it's also one of the best draft formats that Wizards has ever made, so I'm definitely going to be doing a draft of that. Uh, it'll be nice to get back to those cards. Um, otherwise, I have a few things in the works. I'm going to be doing some MTG MTGO tutorial videos. Uh, if you know how to use MTGO, they won't be terribly useful. Uh, but hopefully they get some new players involved uh, and get them... Uh, sort of familiar with the program right away. Uh, as well, I'm probably going to try to do a Momir Monday, uh, do some Momir Vig dailies. Uh, they're a fun format, uh, and I'll explain those more in the videos if you're not familiar with Momir. Might try some sealed, some things like that, just, get to just to get some more content onto the channel. Um, yeah, if you like the channel, definitely subscribe, like the videos. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Mana Leak, and you can find me on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash The Mana Leak. Uh, definitely join those pages and uh, follow me on Twitter. And yeah, stay tuned for more content.